So I have a friend who keeps asking me, I want to build a new PC, but he doesn't know how or he doesn't want anyone else to build it for him, but he wants to learn. So I took up this challenge of helping him build his first PC over Discord video chat. Here's how it went. So before we start, I want you guys to know a few things. First, the specs of the system. We're running AMD 5600 CPU, 6650 XT for GPU, 3600 megahertz, 32 gigs, of DDR4 memory at CL16. For SSD, we're running an M.2 P3 Plus. Also, in interest of saving time, I've kept this video really short, so people who want to learn how to build their first PC can just quickly glance through it, and I'm going to be posting a more detailed video in the coming weeks of my new build that I just finished with a 7700X, a 4090, and DDR5 memory. If you want to check that out, hit that subscribe and bell icon, you know what to do. So with that out of the way, one more thing, the whole video, because Discord only allows streaming at 720p, is going to be slightly lower quality. I apologize for that in advance. So let's get started. All right, so let's start with the SSD. So we're using a Crucial M.2 NVMe SSD, just unboxing it, leaving it aside. Let's pop it on the power supply here. And also we unbox the power supply. Time for the motherboard, just open the box take the board out and make sure you also take out IO shield and any SATA cables if you're using a SATA SSD. For today's build we're not using any SATA SSDs so we're just going to take out the silver IO shield and the board and place it on the motherboard box like so. Next up RAM. Unbox the RAM and insert it into the two DIMM slots. Usually it's the gray ones or the one farthest from the CPU you put two dims, one dim per slot, and they only go in one way, just like a little Lego. Just drop it in like so, push it in so both pins are locked. Next up, we've got the CPU. We're using a Ryzen 5 5600. Comes with a cooler in the box. To install the CPU, we'll lift this little metal tab by pressing down and right. Align the golden triangles on the top left with the socket and on the CPU. Drop it in, give it a wiggle, make sure it doesn't move. Do not put pressure because it can damage the pins. And drop the pin down. It will need a bit of pressure to lock it in place. You can see my friend here struggling and being afraid he might break something, but that's totally normal. Next up, we've got the CPU cooler. The one included is perfectly fine for this build. See, there's pre-applied thermal paste in there, else you would need a thermal paste. All you have to do is just align the cooler now to mount the specific cooler, you need to remove the AMD plastic brackets that are included in the motherboard. Just remove the screws and lift those black plastic things off. We're going to be using the same backplate that comes with AMD. But before that, we'll drop in the SSD that we unboxed earlier. You can drop in the first slot closest to the CPU that's usually faster than the one at the bottom. And you can use one of the screws included in the board to fix it. If you're struggling to get it in, try angling it to 45 degrees, push it in and then push down, just like so. Put the screw in and you're good to go. Easy does it. That's your storage. That's a 500 gigabyte SSD. Now we have the CPU cooling fan. I would recommend plugging the cable in first so it's easier to manage the cooler position depending on how much cable you have. This one only seems to go one way otherwise there's too much cable around. So you can see the two screws have to align with the two screws at the bottom and the top. You cannot do it in four different ways. There's only two ways it will go. You can start tightening one side and the other. Just do a couple turns just so they catch on to the threads and then rinse and repeat for the other sides. Once that's done, tighten them one by one in a cross pattern until it's completely secure. You can check it by lifting the whole motherboard using that. It shouldn't be too tight, but it shouldn't be too loose either. Next up, we have our GPU. For GPU, this is an RX 6650 XT, which is a pretty good GPU for its price class. And just unbox it, remove all the plastic that you may see in and around the GPU. Just don't leave any because it will permanently stick to the GPU if you do. 
remove the PCIe slot cover and that's pretty much it. You can see that's what the connector looks like and at the back you can remove any particular plastic coverings as well as the port you're going to use. I think for this build we're using HDMI so we'll remove the HDMI port and now to make sure we insert the GPU properly flip the board so the metal parts of the GPU can enter the little slot on the motherboard box so you can insert the GPU safely then drop it in place just like so in the top PCIe port it's the big one with the slot and then press down on it and you will feel it lock in place next up we'll need the power cable for the power supply because we're going to test all the components before we put all of this in a case undo the power supply cable find all the cables you may need for this one we'll need a motherboard cable a CPU cable as well as a graphics cable so those are the three connectors we will need so you can see the one that's bunched up like that for that's a CPU connector it's also labeled for some of the power supplies now for the graphics card same thing you'll see these split pins just combine the pins if it's an 8 pin GPU which it is and then plug it in just like so it only goes in one way as usual just like the little Lego just drop it in same for the motherboard side you'll see a little uh, indent on the plastic clips so it only goes in one way you can plug in a monitor to the graphics card so we can test everything that we just connected and a Windows 11 installed USB if you want to test if everything works right away it's up to you but you will need it eventually to install Windows then you just short using a flathead screwdriver the power pins that are labeled on the motherboards bottom usually uh, in this one it was the top right ones it says power switch we can see the RGB lights up that means everything seems to work okay but to verify we check the monitor for any post messages and there we go we got a post we can see all the RAM is detected 32 gigs as well as the SSD and GPU is also detected which is great at this point you can choose to update the BIOS and enable 4G decoding for resizable bar and also enable DOCP or XMP for overclocking your RAM most of the systems will have it set to the base speed by default but it's a simple flip of a switch and you're on DOCP or XMP and there we go we're running at 3600 megahertz now which is the maximum the CPU can safely do uh, let's remove all the cables so we can install the motherboard on the case the only things we need to remove here is the HDMI port from the back of the GPU the power port as well as anything that would hinder us installing it directly onto the case for the GPU there is a little button on the PCIe slot that you need to press to release the GPU for RAM you can just leave that in place that's fine now here's the case we're using it's a really cool looking case to get started we just take both the side panels off and there should be a little bag with all the screws that are included with the case grab some uh, magnetic plate or something like that to organize your screws the first step we need to do now is to install the power supply this is a deep cool power supply you can choose whether you want the fan facing up or down depending on where you're going to put it if you're using it on the desk you can have the fan facing down if you're putting your desktop tower on the floor you would put the fan facing up so it doesn't gather all the dust from the floor once the power supply is installed with the old four screws you need to configure the standoffs on the case but before that we'll just install the IO shield just drop it in place make sure it's in the right orientation you can look at the board to see if it's the right way once it is installed you drop in the motherboard install the screws the center screw is what I recommend installing first so that secures the board once the board is secure and you got all the cables cleared you would install all the other screws time to install the graphics card normally you would see six screws per motherboard and 
there we go just align the graphics guide like so and push it in that's it it's locked in place all you need to do now is plug in the power cable for the GPU just like that to make it look clean plug in all the other connectors the CPU and motherboard ones that's the motherboard and the next one is going to be the case power connectors which will allow you to use the front USB front audio and power button to you connect that you would see the same place where we shorted with screwdriver earlier but before that we'll plug in the front audio and front USB so in this video you can't see what he's doing but I'll, I'll show a photo on the screen for what it looks like and where you need to plug in those cables then we plug in the fans and the RGB so we can control it because this particular case has RGB control at the front. Now we put the back side panel back on. It will be harder depending on how good of a job you did for cable management. Might need another person's help, but there you go. Look how cool that PC looks. Now I'm to plug it all in and check if it all works. Plug in the HDMI again. Looks like everything's plugged in. Press the power button and boom, you got contact. And at this stage, you can see one of the RAM is not lighting up with RGB. That means it's not properly connected. You can undo it, remount it, and make sure it is all good. Keep pressing delete on your keyboard to get into your BIOS or UEFI utility. Make sure everything shows up there. You can see both RAM sticks are now functional and all good to go. And there you go guys, that's how you build your first PC. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, you can let me know down in the comments down below. You can check out my other videos right up there if you want to see how to install Windows 11. That's gonna be it, thank you for watching this video. Check out my other content right up here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.